provide you with the lowest per GB rates, night or day. SLT 4G, driving you ever forward. Making headlines for first at nine. Unwavering conviction. President Maitri Palasirisena pledges never to appoint UNP leader Ranil Vikram Singha as Prime Minister. Last chance. Prime Minister calls for support to avert the country from suffering a similar fate as Greece. Upsetting the apple cart. UNP MP Harin Fernando publicly backs parliamentarian Sajid Premadasa for party leadership. Hands off. Attorney at law Krishmal Varnasurya criticizes Western powers for infringing on Sri Lanka's internal matters. Sri Lankans will not stand by and watch you trying to interfere in our internal affairs. The divorce finalized. After 18 months of discussions, EU leaders finally agree on a Brexit deal. Bike ka gatot phone nikak. Oh, tor agat Yamaha bike madil sandha rupyal hatalis dahak takwa watina smartphone nikak no mile. Ikmankaran November tihadakwa pamanai. Kunde si saitai. Amatan bindu ekai kai hatai. Hai si namia, hai si namia. EMW tim pamanai. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhamke Kanaika. And let's start with the local stories. President Maitri Palasirisen insists that he will not reappoint United National Party leader Ranil Vikram Singha as the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. The president expressed these views speaking to foreign media correspondents in Colombo today. The president's media division stated that President Sirisena had also spoken of his plan to appoint a presidential commission to look into incidents of corruption and other irregularities during the tenure of former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha and I joined hands to establish a new government after agreeing to move forward with lessons learned from the past. If I wasn't this kind of an individual, I wouldn't have joined hands with Ranil Vikram Singha to become the common candidate. That was at a time when I had a political journey of 47 years against the UNP. Then we were able to agree on a new political outlook and set of principles. There are enough people in this country who have made mistakes, but what's important is to make new agreements in line with the current political needs. <laughs> We can't be sure as to who has the majority on the 29th, but if someone proves they have the majority according to the way in which I want the vote to be carried out, I will have to accept him. I will never in my life appoint Mr. Ranil Vikram Singh as the Prime Minister. I have clearly told members of the United National Front that I will not appoint Vikram Singh as the Prime Minister, even if they somehow win a majority in Parliament. As all of you know, it is not a personal problem, but a problem of different political principles. The parliamentary system and the constitution consists of laws, articles as well as traditions. If we take Britain as an example, they do not have any standing orders like we do. So they strictly follow parliamentary traditions. I must be able to work with whoever I appoint as prime minister. I will never appoint Sarat Fonseca as my prime minister even if he is nominated because his name is mentioned even in this plot to assassinate me. So if they win a no confidence motion in a constitutional manner, the United National Front must come forward with a name other than Ranil Vikram Singha and Sarat Fonseca. These cases are within the purview of the justice and legal system of the country. The police and other law enforcement units must always be impartial and no one can influence them. Now, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajpaksha requests all the people of the country to join with the government to save the country from sliding into disaster. Releasing a special statement to media today, the Premier said if the situation is left unabated, Sri Lanka will share the same fate as Greece and this is the final opportunity to save the country from it.
ஆலோசிந்த பார்லிமெண்ட் வைக்கிறப்பு காத்தாவே In my speech in parliament on the 15th of November I proposed to all political parties that we agree among ourselves to hold a general election to enable the people to exercise their sovereign right to elect a government of their choice JVP agreed but the United National Party has been evasively saying that we should hold a presidential election instead of a general election the problem is is in parliament hence there is no need to hold a presidential election at this stage some people ask me why i accepted office when there was less than 18 months to go for the next election i have heard members of the unp saying that if i had been patient for another 18 months i could have won the ensuing election with a two thirds majority the president explained in his address to the nation that he appointed me as prime minister only after things reached a stage where he had absolutely no other option when the government is entrusted to me in such circumstances i cannot in all fairness shun the responsibility we managed to find the money to fight the war we did not allow the people to feel the effects of the 2007 world food crisis within a period of 9 years my government increased the us dollar per capita income of the country threefold the average economic growth rate during those years was 7.4% the exchange rate was 131 rupees to the dollar the debt to gdp ratio was 70% On the 9th of January in 2015 we handed over to the new UNP government an economically stable country. I made it a point to inform the people from time to time in writing of the foreign currency loans that the UNP government was taking through various sources such as Sri Lanka development bonds, sovereign bonds, syndicated loans, currency swaps etc. But I knew that once we were back in power this debt burden would be the biggest problem that we would have to face. Due to this debt burden it would take a while to turn things around. The president and the people of this country know that only we can extricate this country from the crisis it is in. The government that we will form together with the president will be a powerful and people-oriented government. The cabinet spokesperson of the previous government had publicly stated on numerous occasions that in 2015 the people had not voted for a change of government due to any lack of food or clothing. He said that the people voted for a change in 2015 for the sake of democracy. But after that change of government, the people ended up without democracy, without the right to vote and without food and clothing as well. Let us all join hands to defeat the forces that seek to destroy this country like we did during the war. This is the last opportunity we have. If our efforts fail, the country will end up like Greece. The Ministry of International Trade and Investment Promotion Bandula Gunawardena says the government will ensure that the Sri Lankan rupee is gradually appreciated to 160 against the US dollar in the first year of implementing the new budget. Minister Gunawardena expressed this view at a public gathering in Homagama today. A public gathering was organized in Homagama today by the governing party under the theme the public force for Mahinda. Several ministers expressed their views. Edava start edi When we started a fight for freedom in 2018 against followers of Western world, they are threatening to bring international sanctions against Sri Lanka with the support of the West. We remind Ranil and his group that if we were to fear such threats so easily, we wouldn't have started this fight in the first place. Whatever the speaker was talking about all these weeks will go to waste if the Supreme Court gives its verdict that the president's declaration to dissolve parliament is legitimate. The UNP has the support of only 100 parliamentarians. They will have to establish a government with the TNA to show the majority of 113. But will they do so? No, they won't ever. Let's say they will also get the support of whoever joins from our side. These new MPs will still require president's approval for ministerial positions. As the megapolis and western development minister, I have to put a stop to all public nuisance caused by former minister Champika Ranawaka to the people of Homagama. Champika lage desa balane ape ne ko ape merate janatawata sahatikeyak dena. We pledge to the people of this country that we will take measures to stabilize the rupee at 160 against the US dollar during the first year of implementation of the new budget and gradually allow the rupee to appreciate to 140 by the second year. We ask President Maithripala Sirisena to immediately appoint a presidential commission to look into the Sinhala Muslim ethnic clashes which took place in Aludgama of Teldenia to find out who was responsible for these incidents. ஜனாதிபதி சிறிசேன மத்துமாங்க இல்லனவா
Moving forward with more political news, UNP parliamentarian Ajit P. Pereira says that the United National Party is ready to hand over 113 affidavits to President Maitripala Sirisena containing signatures of the majority of parliament members. He made these comments at a media conference held at Temple Trees today. In an interview with the newspaper, the president said that he is ready to invite another prime minister if Mahindra Rajpaksha does not command the majority in parliament. What else should we do to prove that Mahindra Rajpaksha does not have parliamentary majority? The country has fallen into dire straits during a month's time. Tourism industry has collapsed, investors have turned their backs on the country, and our economy was downgraded on international rankings. What else do you want the country to face? Are you asking us to be rebels? The public remain quiet because they are good. If you are trying to suppress democracy, we will lead the public against you. There are more than 113 affidavits, and we are ready to present them to him at any given time. Meanwhile, the UNP organized a religious event at the Temple Trees last evening under the patronage of former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Satyagraha campaign that was launched at the Vihar Mahadevi Park in Colombo, themed Defeat the Conspiracy of President Sirisena, was held for a fifth consecutive day. Parliamentarians and many artists were seen participating. UNP supporters also carried out various protests today, calling to re-establish democracy in the country. <laughs> Meanwhile, several UNP parliamentarians expressed their views regarding the current political situation of the country. We have showed that the United National Party is a well-disciplined party and this was evident during the parliamentary sessions. Ranil Vikram Singh led his party even during such a challenging time. He was able to safeguard the temple trace. He was able to safeguard the majority of 122 parliamentarians. I told our leader that I will not contest elections if I don't see a change in the party. The entire country is asking for Sajid, and we are definitely in support of him. Attorney at law Krishmal Varnasure calls on international powers to keep their hands off Sri Lanka's international or internal rather political affairs. Speaking to media in Colombo today, Attorney at law Varnasure pointed out that non Sri Lankan state actors must respect the country's independence. Call upon all those non Sri Lankan state actors, whether they be governmental, non governmental, or states, who seem to be at tandem issuing statements which primarily deal with the internal affairs of Sri Lanka. This morning I saw a statement from, I believe, the United States calling upon our parliament to accept the no-confidence motion that is purported to have been passed. Then somewhat earlier, there was another statement, I believe from the same state or perhaps somewhere else, calling upon the Honorable Speaker to uh, summon Parliament. Now, in so far as we know, Sri Lanka is an independent state and, and we were one of the first signatories of the UN Convention. And it is a, it's a primary principle of that convention that states do not interfere in other internal affairs of a state. And particularly, the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Protocol compels states not to interfere in the internal affairs of sovereign states. Now, Sri Lanka, therefore, does not take very kindly to other states telling us how to run our country. There is a diplomatic manner in which you can express concern. So I would like to call upon all those states who appear to think that Sri Lanka can still be pulled and pushed at their whims and fancies by pulling strings and telling us how to run our country. Please remember that whilst we are a very kind and smiling nation and very accommodating, Sri Lankans will not stand by and watch you trying to interfere in our internal affairs. And therefore be warned that let Sri Lanka handle our own affairs. We have a law, we have a judicial structure that has proclaimed to the world that democracy, good governance still carries in this country. So let us sort our affairs. Please be our friends. Do not try to interfere unnecessarily in our internal affairs and therefore uh, become enemies of the Sri Lankan people. Now the grand finale of Derana Little Star Season 9 was held last night at Sugadasa Stadium. 20 finalists from among thousands of children competed for the coveted titles of most popular star and most talented star in their respective age categories at yesterday's star-studded event. The grand finale of Sri Lanka's biggest reality platform for future stars, Deran a Little Star Season 9, was held yesterday under the theme Choco Park. Little stars who were crowned during the past seasons also performed during the spectacular event. 
Amongst thousands of competitors from across the country, 20 children entered the grand finale vying for the two top titles. Aksha Chamudi emerged the most popular star in the under-8 singing category. <laughs> Irisha Rajini was crowned the most talented star in the under-8 singing category, while Aksha Chamudi became the runner-up in the category. In the under-8 dancing category, Thinali Dihasna won the title for most popular little star of the season. The most talented little star of the same category went to Yehansa Minsadi, while Yatish Kenuja became the runner-up in the same category. Yehansa Minsadi. Samidi Subhara won the title for the most popular singer in the under-12 category. The most talented little star was awarded to Siti Jatikshana, while Ashini Chamatka was the runner-up. Don Ginevra became the most popular dancer in the under-12 category. The most talented dancer was awarded to Netni Udari, while Tisendi Dilakna was the runner-up of the title. Now moving on to other local stories, the Criminal Investigations Department recorded a statement from Inspector General of Police Puji Jayasundara this morning pertaining to allegations levelled by Namal Kumara of the anti-corruption force. Investigations are ongoing into recent revelations made by Namal Kumara of a conspiracy to assassinate the President and the former Defence Secretary. Director Operations of the Anti-Corruption Force Namal Kumara revealed in September of an alleged conspiracy to assassinate President Maitri Pala Sirisena and former Defence Secretary Gota Be Rajapaksa. Namal Kumara also released recordings of telephone conversations with former DIG of the Terrorist Investigation Division Nalaka De Silva, claiming that the former DIG was connected to the assassination plot. Accordingly, former DIG Nalaka De Silva was arrested and kept in remand prison facilitating ongoing investigations. At the same time, the Government Analyst Department confirmed that 123 out of 124 recordings matched voice samples of the former DIG and Namal Kumara. It was in this backdrop that IGP Pujit Jai Sundara was summoned to record a statement at the Criminal Investigation Department. He was questioned for almost four hours. An official from the CID said that the IGP will be summoned again for further investigations. Meanwhile, Direct Operations of the Anti-Corruption Force Namal Kumara addressed a media briefing today and released yet another recording for media today. <laughs> However, when we questioned over the allegation former Minister Ranjit Madhuma Bandara, we mentally refused the allegation. Now we're going to move in for a short commercial break with a weekly market update on the other side. Stay tuned. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel. The Verena 24-7. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, market analysts expect investors to remain in the sidelines in the coming week due to low investor confidence in the market. However, last week, foreigners remained active for the week closing as net sellers, while foreign sales accounted for 45% of the total weekly turnover. A net foreign outflow of 188 million rupees was recorded last week. We now have Head of Research at First Capital Holdings, Dimantha Matthew, for a detailed picture as to how the market will perform in the coming week. 
stock market was on a slow downtrend uh, last week uh, with the continued political uncertainty uh, weighing heavily on the index. We expect the investors to be on the sidelines with uh, prevailing low investor confidence levels. Foreigners are likely to be on the selling side while most uh, local investors are expected to be on the sidelines until some uh, predictability can be uh, witnessed. On the bond market, uh, most uh, bond participants are likely to be on the sidelines while some selling pressure is also expected to continue slowly pushing up the yield, specifically on the short tenors ahead of the bill auction on Wednesday. Uh, weak market conditions in the bond market is uh, likely to continue uh, due to the continued uh, foreign selling that is prevailing and the weak rupee which has already touched a new low last week and also the prevailing uh, liquidity shortage in the market. Time to look at what's happening around the world. Now, after more than 18 months of intense negotiations and severe media scrutiny, Britain and the European Union have agreed on a decisive Brexit deal. President of the European Council Donald Tusk announced that both the withdrawal agreement, which covers the divorce settlement, and the political declaration on future trade had been approved by the EU leaders. The United Kingdom is scheduled to leave the uh, EU on the 29th of March next year. After 18 months of discussions and disagreements, the 27 European Union leaders have endorsed British Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit deal after a brief meeting at a summit in Brussels. President of the European Council Donald Tusk signalled yesterday that the deal would be approved after Spain withdrew last-minute concerns over Gibraltar. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez announced yesterday that any future decisions regarding Gibraltar would be made with Spain. I have informed the King about an agreement on Gibraltar. Firstly, I want to tell you that the European Council will take place tomorrow and secondly, that Europe and the UK have accepted the conditions imposed by Spain. Therefore, Spain will lift its veto and vote in favour of Brexit tomorrow. The deal now needs to be approved by the UK Parliament where a vote on the deal is scheduled in early December, but its approval is by no means guaranteed, with Labour, the LIB Dems, the SNP and many Conservatives MPs set to vote against. Before the deal was reached, UK Prime Minister Theresa May made a dramatic deal appeal to the British public to get behind the agreement, arguing it is the best deal she could have struck and honours the result of the Brexit referendum. In her open letter to the nation, May also said she would campaign heart and soul to get her Brexit deal through Britain's parliament. With a sign-off on the divorce treaty and political declaration with the European Union, the UK will end its over 40-year-long journey with the world's biggest trading bloc. Staying with Europe, Paris is seeing violent protests and clashes. 19 people have been injured, including four police officers, while over 130 police have been arrested, or people rather, have been arrested. As part of the Yellow Vest protests across France, around 8,000 protesters took to the streets in Paris for the second week over rising fuel costs and President Emmanuel Macron's economic policies. More than 100,000 people took part in about 1,600 protests across France yesterday over French President Emmanuel Macron's economic policies and rising fuel costs. Most of the Yellow West protests passed off peacefully, except in the capital where 8,000 demonstrators gathered. 5,000 police officers were deployed in Paris where metal barriers around the Champs Elysees were set up to stop protesters reaching key buildings such as the President's office and the National Assembly. However, clashes erupted as angry protesters lit fires, tore down street signs, erected barricades, pulled up paving stones and hurled them at police while shouting slogans against Macron. The chaos continued into the evening when police cleared most of the area. French President Emmanuel Macron lashed out at demonstrators on Twitter, saying there is no place for violence in the French Republic. The protest and the violence were on a much smaller scale than the previous week. Last Saturday, more than 280,000 people took part in the Yellow West protests, where two people were killed and more than 600 people injured. We have today's progress of the test match between Sri Lanka and England on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Verana 24-7.
Now moving on to your weather forecast, temperatures are to vary between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius with the highest temperature expected in the Putlam district. Meanwhile, showers or thunder showers will occur at many places with heavy falls of about 100 millimetres expected in the Sabaraguma province as well as in the districts of Gaul and Mathur. Misty conditions are also expected in the central and Sabaraguma provinces during the mornings. And here is a look at your city by city forecast. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. And before we go, we're going to take you to Italy, where Lake Como is. Now, this lake is of glacial origins and it has an area of 140 square kilometers, making it the largest or make it the third largest lake in Italy. Lake Como is known as the most spectacular of the region's three major lakes. Shaped like an upside down letter Y, Lake Como has been a popular retreat for aristocrats and wealthy people since Roman times. Thanks for watching. Bye. -bye. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verona, 24-7.